how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to draw together in unity. And the last verse says, For there the Lord commanded the blessing which is life forevermore. So I want to thank you all. And I pray that the next time we're going to meet, God is going to take you from where you are now to where he wants you to be spiritually and every other of life. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we don't have time on our hands. I wish we have time. We could have talked on so many subjects. I just want to appreciate God on behalf of myself and my wife. And first to thank uh, Brother Aigo. Because when I came in, I asked him, where do you fellowship? And he said, well, he has just discovered the church. And I came here for the first time. And I love the place. And my spirit was calm. And I want to thank everyone for all the lessons we've learned for the almost four years that we spent here. It's been great. The fellowship has been wonderful. The brotherhood has been great. And I've learned new things. Things that hitherto I used to run away from. I couldn't run anymore. Like Job said, said the things that he feared so much eventually happened to him. We will live with a message. Uh, if we look at the book of Philippians, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, we saw what Paul wrote concerning the church in Philippi. It is quite great. You've been a blessing to us. You have given us so much. And I pray that God will sustain each and every one of us. All I see will continue to be in our hearts. The men's fellowship, the women's fellowship has been very great. And I pray that the Lord will keep the women together. The Lord will keep the men. And the Lord will keep the children. For the intercessory prayer, we will continue to pray. And I trust the Lord that he will do great and mighty things. I have seen God at work for the more than three years we've spent here. It's been quite great. Whenever we gather together as a church to pray, he hears and he answers. And I believe he will always answer. I know we're going to move to a new location. And I know that God is at work. He's leading us and he will continue to lead us. We're going to miss everyone. It's been quite difficult. And I thank God for sustaining us. But we pray that we will meet again. If not in Korea, I pray that every one of us will sit at the feet of the Master. And then we will reflect on our relationship and what we all went through. Korea has been a blessing to us. It has been a very great blessing in all aspects of our lives. And I trust that it will be a blessing unto everyone. The Bible says we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I ask that in our private moment, let us pray for the peace in the Korean Peninsula. God has been at work. May God bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Good morning, church. Uh, today, I can simply say that I, I now know why God sent us to Korea. Initially, I thought I was coming to work on a Gina project, but that was not true. Um, he sent us uh, so that we can have fellowship with this church, which is the best I've ever had it. Um, like I said, I've always been in legalistic settings where people are told, don't do this, don't do that. If you suddenly come late to church, they look at you like the big sinner. But here is a place where the Holy Spirit, everyone is allowed to open up his heart that we are all sinners. And here is a place where Jesus is the perfected spirit and who is uh, sanctifying each and every one of us. And for that reason that the scripture says that he, the sanctifier and the, the people being sanctified are of one spirit. So there is no perfect church anywhere in the world. But my joy is that I made a church where the Holy Spirit is ruling. I didn't find any laws or people dictating things here. There is no pastor in this church, but the Holy Spirit is the pastor. He's the greatest I've seen it. Um, I'm really emotional, but I encourage you to remain with the Lord. If I don't see you again, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless you.
Thanks for that. We, um, we're going to miss you all. And God's blessings on, uh, on all of you. And like you said, Kalechi, it, this might be a temporary goodbye, but it's not a forever goodbye. So we take uh, joy in that. Can I get the rest of the worship team up here? Are we dismissing yeah. 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 kids now? Oh, Okay, and uh, please stand. We'll worship the Lord.
Yes, thank you, Jesus. All right, church, you may be seated. We're going to continue worship this morning by taking the Lord's Supper, um, participating in communion. And before we begin, I just wanted to take a moment and just give ourselves something to, to think about. You know, why do we take the Lord's Supper? Why do we take communion? And, um, you know, of course, the obvious reason, first reason is Jesus instructed us to, but why did He want us to do that? And I just think there's something really powerful when we come together as a church and celebrate the victory that Jesus um, did on the cross, worked on the cross for us. And um, I recently heard something, it was uh, just a message I heard on YouTube, and in it the, the um, pastor was talking about, someone said, why do we celebrate you know, Jesus' victory when it hasn't yet happened in our lives, i.e. we haven't yet successfully finished running the race and gone to heaven. And um, the pastor's response was, that's exactly what Jesus did in the Lord's Supper. He hadn't yet been crucified, his blood hadn't yet been shed for us, but yet there was that celebration that, that Christ's victory was coming. And, uh, and, and so also for us, just the power that, that Christ's um, victory has in our own lives. Not just for eternity, although that is very important, but um, also in our daily life, all the struggles, the, the lust, the um, anger, the pride, the, the things that we all deal with on a daily basis, that Jesus has gotten victory over that. I also want to read um, another passage of the scripture that I think is important to highlight when we take communion. So this is 1 Corinthians 11, 27. So anyone who drinks this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourselves. So I'd like to just take a moment for all of us to just pray and just ask uh, God's forgiveness on us. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I ask that you will cover all of our sins, Father God, um, every thought, every action that we've done, O oh Lord. I pray that uh, if any of us is harboring um, uh, unforgiveness or a grudge against someone, Father God, may we make that right. May we forgive them. In the name of Jesus Christ, so you will forgive our sins. I pray that we will um, not take this unworthily, but that you will be glorified and honored, Lord, in the celebration of communion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So can I ask um, uh, Savior and uh, Monty to help me uh, distribute the elements? So I'd also like to say that... Um, this is by no means compulsory. Y'all yeah, can go ahead and start passing around. No means compulsory. If you don't, you know, feel led to take it, just let the let the plate um, pass you by. I also want to say for um, new new timers, this can be a little tricky. I've always found that if you just take your uh, thumb and try to rub that top bit of the cellophane, you can get the wafer part out, and then the the juice or wine parts a little easier to get to. So I'd also like to ask, we'll, we'll take it together, so we'll just have a, a couple moments here of quiet um, contemplation and, and prayer while we're waiting for the, the elements to be distributed.
Okay, from uh, 1 Corinthians, if we want to take our, our wafer. From 1 Corinthians 11. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me in remembrance of him. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do these to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So in remembrance of him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity to celebrate the victory you, you um, did for us. Thank you for your body and your blood that was spilled for us so we could spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in keeping with, uh, okay, sorry, first, uh, children, you are dismissed. As the children are being dismissed, we've got a long-standing OIC um, tradition that on your last Sunday you have to preach. So, Kalechi, I'd like to welcome you forward to, uh, to bring us the word. As if you didn't have enough stress in your life right now, right? Today we are going to look at a uh, topic, eternal life in Christ. Just give me some minutes, let me pull it well. So let's start with the introduction, uh, which is uh, our Lord's Prayer introduction. It said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the disciples of Jesus said to him, Teach us how to pray, because the disciples of John taught them. And he started with this. So the next question for us is, what is the will of God? So in this introductory part, there are so many things here, but it's not the subject for us today. First, he acknowledged that God is holy, hallowed. He talked about greeting done to God, and that God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. You and I know that in heaven, everyone is obedient to God. That's exactly the will that God demands in the earth. But because we are sinners, it's impossible in this current world. So what Jesus is saying to us to pray 
is that hearts be changed and converted to do the will of God. That souls be redeemed from this sinful world to prepare eternally to live with God in the kingdom of heaven. That is the meaning of the introductory part. So the next question is, what is the will of God? Could you please look at the next slide? Ah, okay. <laughs> So the next question is, what the will of God? Um, many people, we discuss about what the will of God is. I've heard people say something like, oh God, take me to my divine destiny, my glorious end, my breakthrough. And a lot of time I discover that people are talking about financial or material prosperity or big job or something that is in this world. So people talk about divine destiny, they talk about glorious end, and the moment they get the big job or big promotion, they say, oh, I've landed. But that is not. This is why Paul said in 1 Timothy, I think chapter 3, 6 or so, and he said some people think that godliness is a means to worldly gain, but he said this is wrong. Today that is gospel making around. Many people are preaching that, and the people preaching that are in the church. And we are not aware that that is the prophecy of Jesus coming to fulfillment. When he said some people will be wolves, but they wear the sheep clothing. Jesus is talking about people who are going to sit as pastors and owners of churches and stuff like that and start speaking something not to the gospel. Glory be to Jesus. So, but what is the will of God? It's just one thing. So we can read. It's not all the things that we've been thinking. It's not, I get a good job, I need to relocate. No, it's not. It's just one thing. Like I said, God brought me here as, as part of building me for that will. And each and every one of us were brought to Korea as part of preparing us to meet that will. And just one thing. <coughs> so the next question is, what is it? For I have come down from heaven, Jesus is saying. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Glory be to Jesus. So this is the only thing that is the will of God. God is saying, you and I are sinners. Nobody can deny that. We are very sinful. Even the thing is before us. If you go and read 1 Corinthians 13, talked about what true love is. He's patient, but you can see I'm very patient. And every day I ask the Lord, sanctify my heart. The love is selfless. It lays down life for others. When he wants to buy, material thing, pleasure, he remembers the poor. That is the love. But how many of us are keeping up with that? We are far from it because we have sin in the heart. The body of Christ is one. And I keep telling each and every one of us, when you want to plan for your family for expensive outing, remember the poor. The poor is your toe. Just like the body is one. Paul described in I think First Corinthians 12, if I wound my little toe, my brain will feel pains, my hand will feel pains, and my back will ache. So it's exactly the same with the, all the poor people everywhere we find them. The Lord has not blessed us materially or spiritually to lavish it on ourselves. That is a big misconception that so many people preach in the church today. Glory be to Jesus. So. Jesus said, his, the will of the Father is that anyone who sees him and believes in him will do what will have eternal life or everlasting life. So let, let's keep going. <coughs> you might ask, how do we see Jesus? But we see him when we start reading the scripture, meditating on the Bible every day. Honestly, I tell you, God will start speaking to you directly. Peter made me know this. I never knew. 
the day he said we met, it was a great day. And he told me God speaks. And sometimes people thought, go and do meditation. Any morning, you keep quiet, sit in one place, don't talk. No, that is wrong. I don't encourage people to do that. That is kind of Buddhist meditation. The meditation Christ asks us to do is quiet, you reflect on God's word. Think about what Jesus. If you leave your spirit open, demons can fly in. That's, that's not. So the moment you read the Bible, meditate on it. God will speak to you. Sometimes the Lord wakes me up in the morning, not because I'm anything. He starts with the spirit of counsel. Start teaching on deep topics, deep mysteries. So it's real. I never knew it's real. So seeing Jesus is real. If you have not encountered him, tell him to appear before you. He will. Tell him to give you hunger. He will. Glory be to Jesus. So let's get to the next slide, please. Oh, I have my <laughs> sorry. I'm not used to this. Okay, what is eternal life? So, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. So, New King James Version is using everlasting life, but some Bible translation uses eternal life. It's just the same thing. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. John chapter 6, 47 to 51. So, we just ate the bread, and the bread Christ is talking about here is the spiritual food. Christ is that food. So, we eat it when we read the word. I never realized that the word of God is food until when God gave me insatiable hunger for himself. I don't mind again about physical food. I can live it for the whole day, and I'm eating that word. I find myself, you know, if you didn't break time, I hide somewhere. Sometimes I go in unbelievable places, <laughs> you won't believe it, <laughs> but it's something so interesting, honestly. You will not care about anything again in this world. Not money, not wealth, not anything. You are craving for eternal joy. And Christ will satisfy you with that. Glory be to Jesus. I don't know if this is loud enough. Okay. So he said, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh, is my body, which I shall give for the life of the world. So through this flesh that was torn on the cross, we receive life. This is true. It remains a mystery, but if you keep searching, God will reveal it to you and make it so real. And you will just be full of, wow, wow, this is true. That's why David said, in your light we see light. Jesus, in your light, we receive light. So, the next one is, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. Okay. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Glory be to Jesus. So if you have the Son, Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit, the life is in you. But you might not see it in reality. I keep telling people, Jesus is real. There are a lot of obsession in different denominations. There are a lot of imaginations, wide gazes. There are a lot of fables. But I want to tell you today that Jesus is real. You know, um, Christ said, the word I speak to you is spirit and life. That spirit is reality. And that life is something that truly manifests through you. So it's not, if you are doing anything, even if a pastor or anybody tell you to do something and you don't have conviction in your spirit, don't do. Ask God to give you conviction. The Holy Spirit is taking people one by one. He has written the laws in our heart. So that is why the scripture says, let no one teach you again, for the spirit will minister. That does not mean people cannot preach to you, but when you go home, read the scripture, Ask God to teach you to communicate the message. Glory be to Jesus. 
Why I say this is, many people go ahead teaching people to follow certain laws and certain things, do this and do that. If you don't do this, your course is this. That is not the gospel. That is demonic. You know, I, why I say this, the days ahead is going to be very, very rough. Very, very tough. If people don't take time, you will depart from it. Um, we, what we are seeing now is just the beginning of sorrow. It's going to be very rough with time. We are going to, Christians are going to get shaked up. Your faith will be tried. And yeah, if you are not deeply rooted, you will be blown off. So that's why I encourage us to follow the Bible for the truth. When one of my leaders in fellowship group, he told me, take the whole Bible and read it. I didn't understand what he was saying. But again, it's not a carnal act. I prayed to the Lord, give me the grace. I don't know how to read long things. Inspire me to read. And the Lord gave me the grace. I started eating the Bible. I, I ate it up in one year and I'm still eating. So um, I began to realize that many things taught by men are wrong. There is something the devil is doing. He cherry picks verses and teach them out of context. And that's what many people, people think our men of God are doing. You see, pray for the spirit of discernment. It's very important if you're going to survive the time to come. Otherwise, you will realize. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, what I tell you now, if you don't get it in this world, in the kingdom of heaven, God will tell you you were told. Glory be to Jesus. So, so Jesus is the eternal life. Okay? <coughs> Let's go to the next slide. I have it here. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Glory be to Jesus. Eternal life is to know Jesus. This knowledge is not literal or carnal knowledge. This knowledge is, eternal life is that Christ becomes flesh in you. It becomes your personality. It becomes what you are living every day. As he's extremely patient, extremely loving, extremely caring, compassionate, selfless, ready to die, don't care about anything in the world, give up all his authorities, that is what he's going to become in you. So you are now, it's no longer going to be your life, but Christ's life. That is exactly what Paul is saying in the Philippians chapter 2, I think verse 13 to 15, or thereabout. And he said, for it is not you, but it's the Lord who works in you and causes you to will and act in accordance with the will of God. So when Jesus appears in your life, it is no longer about you. That is why this morning I was deeply convicted about sin. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Purify me and sanctify me that I may be conformed every day in your image. Come and be my life. For I know that I'm dead. My life is hidden in you. So when you see yourself sin, don't beat yourself as if I could have done it better. You can't do any better. Honestly, you can't do any better. You will even do worse. So the point is we are as black as scarlet. Whatever we think we can do better is black. Just say, Jesus, come and become my life. This is reality. If you are thinking you can become better, you stay proud in the heart. You cannot. That's why John the Baptist said, he will increase and I will decrease. Whatever you think you can do better will keep on the decrease. Keep going down. So when you see yourself falling in sin and all over struggling, crying, getting broken, contract in the heart, it's a good thing. The Holy Spirit is working. So to know Jesus, like I said, is to be conversant with Jesus. It's for the word of God to become flesh in you. It's for the word of God to become what you live. You know, when I tell Christians sometimes, what Jesus is saying, what John, Paul, Peter, all what they are saying is not themselves. What Peter is, Jesus, they are speaking a perfect life, and that life is Christ. It's not anybody else. So if Christ comes, that's why the Bible said, when Christ our life appears, we shall glorify with him. And he said again, let's concentrate on the things in heavenlies. I was telling somebody, when Christ said, let 
Let believers don't go to court and drag themselves. Somebody is pulling your property or whatever. It's Christ said, leave the other one. You know the reason for that? The reason is, he wants you to save that unbeliever. Imagine you say you are a Christian and somebody come forcefully to obtain your property. You try it and it's not working. And the guy is ready to go down with you. And you go to court first and you are a believer. You go to worldly court. When you win that guy in the court, take the Bible and go to your house and say, Jesus loves you. He's going to chase you out. Do you know why? Because you don't have the love of Jesus Christ. The love Jesus is saying is, because you know that man is wicked, he has oppressed you. Take your property. He said, give him more. The things he didn't even ask for. Then after that, tell him God bless you. After that, take your Bible, walk to his house and say, Jesus loves you, he's going to welcome you. And you win his soul for the kingdom. Well, you know, we find it hard to take this thing, but this is true. And that's exactly the call we have. It's a very high call. The problem is a lot of us are concentrated with material things. I mean, chasing it, and that was what destroyed Adam and Eve. Glory be to Jesus. So let's go to the next. I have the key. <laughs> Prerequisite for eternal life. He said, we must count all things lost to inherit eternal life. I don't have much time, so I'm just going to go to the striking verses. If you have time, you can go through the scriptures on your own. He said, yet indeed, I count all, all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. I want to say something to you. If you don't reject the whole of this world, money, love of money, love of the world, power, pride. If you don't reject them totally, you cannot be Christ's disciple and you will make it to the kingdom of heaven. Just mark my word. If you keep chasing this world, chasing the power, fighting people in the office, everywhere, paying tight to get increased, you will make it to the kingdom of heaven. Mark my word. I don't speak, even though I say I speak, but the Holy Spirit speaks. Because I know anyone with the Spirit of Christ will know that I'm speaking the truth of God. Glory be to Jesus. So let's, um, he said, to I make it? It's only when we lose all things that your eye can be single. Because at the moment you're chasing this, chasing this, anytime you pick the Bible, the devil will tell you, remember that money, <laughs> remember that promotion in the office, remember that, uh, where are you going to live now? So he will make sure the world does not sink in. And you become the one that Jesus said, when the seed was cast, some fell on thorns and get them choked up. And he explained, he said, these are the ones who are concerned with the cares of this world. So when the word of God lands, they are thinking many things. And the devil, the devil is the thorns, he will choke the world up. And it will not bear fruit unto eternal life. Because this eternal life is a training. Let's, let's uh, keep going. Guarantee for eternal life. So. We are all sealed with the Holy Spirit. And that is the only guarantee we have for this eternal life. And also, Jesus, God himself said, the covenant, my covenant I will not break, nor utter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once I sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever. You may read Hebrews 6, 10 to 18. You know, what I tell people, the commonest thing is, when you look at people who are teaching you today, okay, you compare their life, compare their message to the message of Peter, Paul, John, Episode, Jeremiah, Isaiah. Compare their life to Jesus Christ. It's reality. You will see who they are, that they are not of God. You know, when I said this thing, I, I was really disturbed in my spirit. I started, I said, God, okay, well, what can I do? There are millions in those churches. What can I do? And he said, so I told you, he said, I told you that these people do not belong to us. This is manifestation of the prophecy of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So let, let's uh, go ahead. God, once he says something, he does not break. Fruits of eternal life. So below is a love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the fruits. When they start growing in you, you know that you are building up on this eternal life. We are getting ready for the eternal life in the kingdom of heaven to come. That is why we are here on this earth. Not to grab and, and grab holiness. So, evidence that one has eternal life. See, now hope does not disappoint because of the love 
of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Me, I cannot love before. I can just see somebody and resent him. Just hit him for nothing. But suddenly, I love everyone. I say, I want everyone in the kingdom of God. Please, God, save everyone. What has happened to me? God has transformed my life. It's not about me. It's Christ becoming the life he made. And that's an evidence that you have been prepared for a life in the kingdom where there is true love, not a selfish life. So I don't know about you, but if we are truly in Christ, we need to be growing in this aspect of love, where you have the compassion that many people are lost, drug dealers, harlots, let them come in, you pray for them. Glory be to Jesus. So now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandment, he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought to himself to walk as just as he walked. How did he walk? He was God. He came and made himself ordinary man. Denied every power, every authority. How about us? We pose. So when we pose and grab and all of this, we are not him. We are not in him. So if you are, if we are not living his commandment, to live his commandment, like I said before, I want to illustrate with an example. You may come. This is real. Yeah? It has happened to me. It's not a question of who you are. A brother very close to you, you are uh, maybe a wife, a position in the office, and suddenly he's promoted to something you are expecting. And the moment who you are puffs up, because we have envy inside, the envy puffs up. When people are saying congratulations, you, you see the guy, the envy pops up, and what you do is remember the cross. You just lift your eye, Jesus, the sin in me cannot allow me to celebrate with goodness. Let the power and the blood crush this now and set me free. Fill me with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Let me celebrate with goodness. If you pray this prayer in faith, honestly, envy goes down. And that's who we are. Glory be to Jesus. So, um, I'm going to Evidence you have eternal life, you have time. Who will inherit eternal life? Jesus said, is the one who endures to the end, endures all suffering for the sake of Christ. Who is faithful to the end? I will give the crown of life. Who will inherit eternal life? This is it. So, Jesus, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Here, Jesus is saying in Matthew 24 that the time is rough now. Okay? So, but we may die. Death is nothing to anyone who believes in Christ. Ask Jesus to deliver you from fear of death so that you can serve in truth and in spirit. Who will inherit eternal life, okay? So that's the end. Thank you very much. I didn't have time to speak more on this message, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you more understanding in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this word, O oh Lord. Sanctify us by your word. I pray for this, my beloved brothers, O oh Lord, that you may help pray. King of kings, lift each and every one of them, grant them eternal life, that none shall be missing, found wanting, or missing in the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.